The movie begins with a fisherman named Syracuse who is hauling his net into his boat. But when he pulls the net up, he's surprised to find a woman inside. He notices that the woman is alive, so he quickly frees and resuscitates her. The woman gasps for breath, so the fisherman brings her to the cabin, promising to take her to the hospital. But the woman refuses to see anyone except him, and even when another boat passes by, she quickly hides. Syracuse gets curious and asks for her name, but the woman claims that she doesn't know. He assumes that she lost her memory when she fell in the water, so he introduces himself and tells her that most people call him Circus because they think he's a clown. He keeps insisting on taking her to the hospital, but the woman tries to jump off the boat, so he stops her and promises to take her where no one will see her. Sometime later, he takes her to his deceased mother's caravan. He tells her that his mother used to be a loner and didn't like meeting people, so no one knows about the place. When he leaves, he's disappointed that the woman doesn't even say thank you or goodbye. In the next scene, Syracuse rushes to his ex-wife Mora's house to pick up their daughter Annie. Mora scolds him for being late, but Syracuse ignores her and takes their daughter to her dialysis appointment. During her dialysis, Annie asks for a story to pass the time, so Syracuse starts telling her about the mysterious woman he found, hiding it as a fairy tale. Annie wonders if the woman is a mermaid or a selkie. Syracuse asks what a selkie is, so Annie explains that it's a seal woman who can sing. The selkie would occasionally leave the sea, lose her seal coat, and live on land until the sea calls her back. After the dialysis, the nurse surprises Annie with a new power chair donated by the CRC. She gets very excited and shows it off to her mother's boyfriend, Alex, when they return home. The next day, Syracuse goes to the caravan and finds the mysterious woman singing by the stream. He's preparing his boat to go fishing, and the woman insists on joining him. He refuses because he believes it's unlucky to have a woman on a fishing boat. She challenges this by asking if he'd had luck recently, and when Syracuse admits that he hasn't, he allows her to join him. During their journey, Syracuse asks what song she was singing earlier, but the woman doesn't remember where she heard it. He asks if she remembered her name, and she tells him to call her Andine, which is a name from a mystical story of a girl who came from the water. As the day goes on, the two find that Syracuse's lobster traps are all empty. But when Andine sings and Syracuse hauls another trap, he's surprised to find a lobster there. He thinks that her song is connected to the sudden good luck, so he asks her to sing again while he's lowering another trap. When he pulls it out, he gains two more catches, convincing him that Andine brings him luck. Later, Syracuse sells plenty of lobsters in the market. Then he uses the money to shop for clothes, but also steals some when the saleswoman is busy. He then picks up Annie from school, who insists on racing him home in her new motorized wheelchair. On their way, he continues his mystical story, telling her that the fisherman who found the mysterious woman gets more fish when she sings. After he leads her back to her home, Syracuse continues driving ahead. However, Annie starts following him because she's curious about his story. Syracuse reaches the caravan and gives the new clothes and some food to Andine. She kisses him on the cheek to thank him, but he doesn't react. Instead, he asks how long she plans to stay. She says that it's up to him, and he responds that she can stay there forever. Syracuse shares that he's been telling his daughter about her, but as a fairy tale. This makes Andine smile. Annie watches all this happen from behind the bushes. Later, she goes to the library and borrows books about Selkies. Meanwhile, Syracuse goes to the church to meet the priest. Since there are no support groups in the small town, he treats his confessions like a sobriety program. He shares that he had a dream of being in a funeral, and he's panicking because he's back with Mora. It turns out that unlike him, his ex-wife hasn't stopped drinking, which makes him worry about Annie. The priest suggests seeking help from a counselor, but Syracuse refuses because his fears are a secret. Then he hesitantly admits that he stole some women's clothes. He defends that he was embarrassed about being seen buying them, and he did it for the lady he fished out of the water. The priest starts asking questions, but Syracuse refuses to tell him anything. The next day, Annie goes to the caravan alone and finds Andine swimming in the water. This makes her think that her father's story is real. When Andine steps out of the water, she discovers that Annie is Syracuse's daughter. Annie asks Andine if she has magic powers, like healing her from kidney failure. 
Undine doesn't answer, so Annie keeps asking more questions based on the books she read. Unsure of what to say, Undine invites her into the caravan, but Annie thinks she'll put a hex on her if she does. She then wonders if being underwater is better since she's sick all the time. Undine continues dodging her questions, but the girl is persistent in getting to know her and even offers them to become friends. This makes Undine curious about her lost memories, so she admits that she feels different when she's in the water. Annie then asks about her seal coat, but Undine gets confused. The little girl explains that a Selkie loses her seal coat when she gets on land and can't return until she finds it. If she finds it, she can bury it on land so she can stay for seven years and find happiness with the landmen. Having enjoyed her company, Annie kisses her on the cheek before she leaves. Meanwhile, Syracuse goes to the library to borrow books on Selkies, but the librarian reveals that his daughter just borrowed them. Later, Syracuse and Andine go fishing again. He assigns her to steer the boat, but when another boat passes by, she quickly hides and starts steering using her feet. She sings and suddenly, Syracuse's net gets a huge catch. To his surprise, salmon were also in his net, which doesn't usually get caught this way. But while he's collecting the fish, he quickly warns Andine about the fisheries board patrol heading to his boat. When the patrollers come aboard and notice that Syracuse has caught salmon, they investigate his equipment and discover Andine hiding. However, they don't say anything and claim that everything is normal and eventually leave. Now that the patrollers also saw Andine, Syracuse is relieved that he's not just imagining her. She worries that the patrollers will talk about her, but Syracuse isn't bothered because he's been the topic of rumors before. Since everyone will know about Andine anyway, the two head to the harbor together. After selling the fish, Andine joins him in town to buy her clothes. They bump into Annie, and she reveals that they've already met, so she joins them and helps Andine choose clothes. However, Syracuse's new lady companion has become the hot topic of town. The next day, Annie visits Andine alone. Annie says that she can't swim, so Andine offers to teach her. But when they're in the water, Andine finds something bundled in seaweed. Assuming that it's her seal coat, Annie encourages her to bury it in the abandoned greenhouse near the caravan so she can stay with them for seven years. Later, they go with Syracuse to the regatta. On their way, Annie keeps listing myths about a Selkie who can grant wishes and stay with them unless she has a Selkie husband. However, Andine insists that she isn't a Selkie, nor does she have a husband. During the festivities, Annie dares Andine to prove that she isn't a Selkie. Suddenly, she drives her wheelchair to the edge and falls into the water. Andine immediately dives in to save her, while Syracuse hurries to them as well. When Syracuse finally gets her on a boat, Annie claims that her brakes failed. However, she claims that Andine managed to save her because she breathes underwater. Later that night, after dropping Annie back at Mora's house, Andine admits to Syracuse that his daughter fell on purpose to test her. She then asks why people call him Circus, so he shares that he was a clone when he was a drunk. He stopped drinking when he found Annie in danger one day while Mora was passed out. He decided that one of them should be sober to keep Annie safe, so their marriage eventually ended. Andine comforts him and the two become drawn to each other, leading to a passionate evening. Meanwhile, Mora asks her daughter about Andine, saying that someone came here looking for the woman. This really bothers Annie, and she later has a dream about a mysterious man coming out of the water. The following day, Syracuse goes to see the priest again. He assumes that the fisherman slept with the woman, and Syracuse confirms this. He also explains that he's telling everything to the priest because keeping secrets can drive one mad. Then he admits that Andine brings him luck, but he's afraid that something is about to happen, and he's not sure if it'll be wonderful or terrible. After leaving the church, the mysterious man approaches Syracuse, but he ignores him completely. He takes Annie to her dialysis appointment and asks why she was upset last night, but she says that it's just her imagination. After the appointment, Syracuse and Annie return to Mora's place, but nobody is at home. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a mysterious car drives to Andine's home, so she quickly hides in the greenhouse. The mysterious man searches the home, but fails to find her. Syracuse and Annie search for Mara in town and eventually find her with Alex at the pub. Mora refuses to give him the house keys and says that Annie will be fine hanging out with them. With no other choice, Syracuse leaves. 
When he gets back to the caravan, he's surprised to find it completely thrashed. Thankfully, he finds Ondine by the stream, who now believes that her sulky husband is the mysterious man who came looking for her. Syracuse remembers how Selkies can grant wishes, so he suggests that she can wish the man away. However, she refuses because her wish is for Annie not to be sick anymore. This makes Syracuse happy and sad at the same time, so he agrees to her wish but also wishes for Ondine to stay with them. While they talk, the mysterious man is driving back into town. Coincidentally, a drunk Mora is also driving home with Alex and Annie. This leads to the two vehicles smashing into each other, instantly killing Alex. Soon, Syracuse and Ondine learn about the accident and rush to the hospital. A few hours later, Annie wakes up, but the doctors take her for her operation. While Syracuse and Ondine follow, they pass by the mysterious man, who yells for her upon seeing her. Seeing him brings Ondine's memories back in a flash, leaving her frozen in the hallway. Meanwhile, a doctor pulls Syracuse aside, revealing that Alex was registered as a donor and his kidneys are a match for Annie. Because of this, they immediately perform a transplant to save the girl's life. Later, Andine runs into the man in the chapel, and he's surprised that she's speaking the people's language. Resentful of the man, she tells him to go away, but he insists that he can't since the police want to talk to him about the accident. As he comes closer to her, Andine quickly storms off. Days later, after Alex's funeral, Syracuse sympathizes with his ex-wife and feels guilty over what happened. She tells him to take Annie with him since she can't handle watching over her for now. They head to Alex's wake at the pub and Mora manipulates Syracuse into drinking with her. She also convinces him to get rid of Andine, suggesting that she brings him good luck first, then bad luck. That evening, Syracuse drunkenly heads to his boat, where Andine has been hiding from the mysterious man. With his intoxicated mind, he decides to take her back to her home. He angrily drives further into the sea, questioning the woman about her husband. However, she clarifies that the man isn't her husband. Still, he insists that she's better off at the sea. They head to a secluded lighthouse, and he leaves Andine there. He's convinced that their fairy tale has to end to stop further tragedies. The following day, the priest finds a hunkover Syracuse on a tree. As he sobers up, the man realizes his mistake of accepting good luck. However, the priest tells him that misery is just easy while happiness takes effort. Later, Syracuse finally takes Annie to his home. She asks about Andine, so her father claims that she went on a sea business. However, Annie is sure that she'll be back because she left something, which she refuses to tell her father. The following day, Annie is watching TV when Syracuse hears Andine's song from a foreign singer. He quickly realizes that the woman isn't mythical, and Annie encourages him to go find her immediately. He heads back to the lighthouse and finds Andine near the shore. She asks what made him return, so he explains that he heard her song on TV. Finally, Andine reveals that she was a mule from Romania. She was on a boat to deliver contraband, but the Coast Guards found them. The mysterious man, Vladik, was her handler, and he forced her to escape with their supply since he couldn't swim. However, the land was too far, so Andine discarded the bag of supplies and let herself sink into the water. This was when Syracuse found her. As Syracuse takes her back to town, she reveals that her real name is Joanna. They return to Syracuse's home, only to find Vladik with Annie. Syracuse starts beating the man, but his thugs arrive. With a gun aimed at Syracuse, the men interrogate Joanna about the supply she took. Thinking that they mean her seal coat, Annie begs the woman not to tell them where it is, but during this chaos, Joanna realizes that the bundle she found was the bag of supplies after all. She takes them to the greenhouse, but to her bad luck, the bag is missing. Vladik gets very mad and accuses Annie of moving the bag, so Joanna begs the little girl to tell them where it is, promising to stay with them if she does. Finally, Annie reveals that she hid it in the lobster trap, so the men fish it out. But as they do, she whispers to Jonah that her husband doesn't seem to be a selkie. Recalling that Vladik can't swim, Jonah steps up and pulls on the rope they're standing on, tripping them and sending them into the water, where Vladik drowns. Soon, the police arrive and arrest his thugs. In the final scene of the movie, Syracuse and Annie visit the priest and ask him to officiate a wedding. A few days later, Syracuse and Joanna get married on the same boat where they met. 
living happily ever after. The moral of the story is to believe what you think is true, not what anyone else tells you. People will come up with all kinds of mythical stories, but you should stay true to yourself and follow your heart, just like Syracuse and Annie. And that's it for this movie recap. If you were Annie, would you believe that Jonah is a mythical sea creature? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, we're sure you'll like this one even more. Click now to watch.